Being a trucker, right? You come across a lot of interesting people. And sometimes you have to have, when those conversations lead into something like very informative, you have to actually, you know, take the next step. And what I ended up doing today is I ended up interviewing this trucker by the name of Marvin. He's a owner operator. And had he had so he had like a, a wealth of knowledge. I'm talking about like this dude knows his stuff. And to me, it would have been like a disservice if I didn't actually like, you know, interview him, ask him some questions and about, you know, what it takes to be an owner operator. <laughs> So one of the questions you asked me earlier, what was my biggest hang up, right? Right. So the first one was being able to have the flexibility to take some time off. And uh, I would say the second one would also have to be like my fear, my, my lack of organization. Uh, you organization know, like of what? as far as, uh, you know, with the paperwork and all that stuff. And then um, like VOLs or yeah, maintenance paperwork. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, and then you told me there was like companies that actually um, does such a thing. What do so you So, for, for, for BOLs, I mean, there's apps. Okay. Right? You can, even for anything and everything, there's QuickBooks, right? Yep, so QuickBooks. So, as a business app. owner, the easiest thing for you to do is have that QuickBooks app. That okay. will track your miles. You open a business checking and a business savings account. Yep. Okay. And then you have one personal account. Okay. So, any personal expenses that are happening at home, you could use those. Yep through your personal checking. For business purposes, whether it's replacing tires, scheduled maintenance every 45 days, okay. or paying somebody to do uh, paperwork for you, yep. all that can be done through your business Through your checking. business checking and stuff, okay. And QuickBooks will track all that, and it will tell you how your month went. Okay. So I have it set up to where after every week, yep. I go and I just have to look through my app, and basically mm. my accountant has the access Oh, the okay. App. Gotcha. So he can automatically plug that in, and at the end of the month, he can tell me, okay, this month you owe this much in taxes. Gotcha. Okay. Because taxes will kill you as a <laughs> Really? Like, uh, so have, every quarter you have to uh, pay your taxes, stuff like you that. Don't or, to, but you don't easier. have to. But it's easier. It's easier because it's a smaller chunk. So let's say, for example, my taxes over the last year was roughly around $17,000. Okay. Would you like to pay $17,000 in one go or would you break it down? <laughs> break four? it down in four, yeah. So QuickBooks will help you or enable you to do that. Okay. And accountants, $200 a month. All right. Compliance agents, $150 a month. Okay. Compliance takes care of all your taxes, your IFTA filings, your heavy highway usage tax, and all that good stuff. Mm. Your, your fuel receipts every month because they have to be filed okay. depending on where you travel. Gotcha. Uh, so paying somebody $150 a month and paying somebody another $200 a month for having that peace of mind. Yep, definitely help you out. don't have to worry about okay. at the end of the year. Because a lot of people get put out of service. I've seen owner ops, single truck owner ops being put out of service because their paperwork was not in Not up to date and stuff. I pay somebody $350 a month just to be able to fix all that. For me. Gotcha. And then you also, um, so as far as your... Um, your tax setup are you like an s corp or are you just a single member llc or how do you set it up it really depends so i have my company it's the ram llc okay uh, started it in washington and uh, again how you want to structure it uh usually single truck owner ops it's it's a choice it's it's entirely based off how you plan on using that money because mm. even in today's times i don't know what Truckers, different truckers will tell you, different <laughs> owner ops will tell you, I can tell you what I'm going through. Yeah. You want to try and capitalize and save as much as possible. As possible because you never know. Uh, like last year was rough. You didn't have parts. I was out of service for three months. Ooh. Not because of my fault. They because they didn't have any parts. They didn't have any parts. Okay. And even when they got parts after a month and a half, they put them on, I barely made it 50 miles west. Wow. that location and I broke down again so so you have to account for things of that nature okay uh, 
and again going back to your one percent concern which is i don't i need to take two months off yep. somehow at the back of your mind you have to understand whatever time you plan to take off whether it's downtime because the truck could be in the shop mm -hmm. or time you're taking off yeah all that has to be plugged in together as one so like me when my truck was down for three months yep i took a vacation <laughs> for two months actually. okay so you have to plan all that because there's nobody planning that for you. okay a lot of people see that as a challenge mm -hmm. especially coming from a company driver uh, mindset yep because they're so used to somebody telling them hey go here go here go here exactly as an owner of you have to figure all gonna, that out whoever you pay to get your loads he's gonna call you are you ready to go out yep gotcha and sometimes you will be lazy right yeah so, but at the back of your mind, if you know, okay, I'm planning to take this time off, mm. okay, you can afford to do that. Okay. So uh, how did you come across, let's say, because in this business, trust is a big commodity, right? So uh, as far as you have people that regular, ch you have your own guy as far as mechanic, or do you usually go to love, uh, like a, a, have a contract with, uh, let's say, like a, a big uh, truck stop? You don't need one. Okay. As, a, as, as an owner, of, as a single truck owner, of, you definitely don't need contracts. To answer your question about trust, the only guy you will trust in this business is yourself. Yep. Okay. Everything else, you have to have faith, man. Yeah. Okay. When I was coming out of CDL school, like I said, there was like four companies and all four big names. You know, mm -hmm. Schneiders of the world and, uh, you know, Knight Express and, and Stevens Transport and all that. Yep. Uh, I had two choices. I could either trust what I was being told or because, I mean, like I said, at 40 years old, you know, <laughs> there's very limited risk you can take. True. Right? Yeah, so I agree. Everything has to be a calculated risk. So for me, it was like, do I need somebody breathing down my neck every day? Yep. <laughs> or I'd rather just do that headache myself. Be your own boss and stuff. And uh, yes, it's, it's rough at first okay. because you're trying to learn everything. There's nobody telling you what to do. Yeah. But like I said, I mean, I already had that experience under my belt to where I knew what I was going in for. And uh, you will feel, especially having done this as a company driver, mm -hmm. you will feel this whole breathing room around you. <laughs> yeah. Because now you can plan yourself so much better. Gotcha. And so, I, I don't want people telling you, oh, loads are hard to find or, mm -hmm. you know, trust. The only thing I would do is do your background checks on you. Yeah, and and these days we have we have apps, and we like I use fuel parts to where I can go on their app, and I can actually do a broker search. Mm -hmm. You know, I can do a background search on what the company is like. How do they pay? Okay. Uh, most companies like I get paid within twenty four to forty eight hours. Gotcha. So, as a fresh owner op, be prepared that you know. You might get scammed for every once in a while. Well, not scammed. Not scam, but there might be a delay in receiving in receiving payment. Because again, bringing you on board as a fresh owner of is also a challenge for for them as well. For them as well, because they don't know what your work style is. Gotcha. But in America, the good thing is everything is based off of like FMCSA. Everybody gets scores, and that was also one of the reasons why I chose to come on board as an owner of. Mm. Because if I'm working, I want to build credibility for for, for yourself, not for the company. So. Yes, first year was tough because I used to get pulled over all the time because they know. Yeah. They'll see your DOT and MC numbers yeah. and they'll know, okay, this is a newbie. Okay. So they'll check you <laughs> for everything. I had my audit in the first year. All right. But I passed everything with 100%. And again, the most important thing is how you take care of your, your truck. Gotcha. As long as, even to the point where my truck is dirty right now. Yeah. Never keep it like this because that's you asking them to pull you over. They, they pull, pull you over for small things. Okay. But do your pre-trips, keep your trucks clean. And first year, if you get audited and you get a 100% score, nobody's going to bother you. Like now, I don't even get pulled into scales. Interesting. All right. So all that will play. Into it. Okay. So um, now when it comes to um, purchasing a truck, how did you go about it? There's tons of resources. You can go to auctions. You can go. Truck paper is usually the number one go-to for yeah. everybody. But that's why I was asking you, like, how mechanically inclined are you? Okay. Because I can open the hood right now, and you can take a look at it, and you'd like, oh, this looks like a brand new truck. But that's mm. because I've kept it that way. Yep. Somebody who's selling you a truck, 
is also going to do the same thing. He's yeah, but just it clean it up and everything. And maybe to the point where you're like, you know, don't don't just go by, you know, know what an engine sounds like, what a good clean engine sounds like. Know, look for leaks, uh, especially with these trucks, the newer trucks. Uh, I highly recommend don't go for anything more than two years old. Okay. Unless, of course, you're going to go and get everything switched out. Yep. Uh, don't go for anything more than two years old was my criteria. I needed warranties. So with this, I came with EW4 warranties. So I had warranties for four years, 500,000 miles. All right. So that helped me and saved me a lot of money because I had repairs in my first year. First okay. Two years. Uh, so nothing out of pocket because of those warranties. So Warranty, get warranties, gotcha. look for warranties. Uh, don't go for anything more than two years old. Major expenses will be your tires and your brakes. Make sure nothing's leaking. If there is anything, if you're looking for a truck, get it changed by the seller. Yeah. Uh, things of that nature, and, and, and you should be. Most of these trucks are computerized, anyways. Okay. To where you can simply hook it up and find out what exactly is going on. Gotcha. And last but not least, if you have somebody trustworthy, like a mechanic, take them with you yeah. to get the truck inspected. Okay. Uh, and then ask for inspection reports on the trucks or something. On the truck as well. On the truck. You will know what exactly is going on. Mm. Usually fleets maintain their trucks. So yeah. I got this from a fleet. From a fleet, okay. And uh, it was a single truck mm. uh, lease. So how as far as uh, um, insurance now, so did you get like, well, you had you first had to get a truck before you could actually get a quote for your insurance. Mm -hmm. All right, so then um, how did that process go, if you don't mind me uh, asking? Insurance is going to be high in okay. the first year. But that's why I recommend don't go buying a $250,000 truck. Okay. Buy something under $100,000 so insurance is manageable for you. Okay, okay. And then depending on if you get your own trailer or not, all right. Also Do you also have your own trailer, or? Yeah, this is my own trailer. I All used right. to have a reefer, but last year the reefer business went down, so I bought a dry van. Yeah, gotcha. So, uh, and the average price for a trailer that's uh, like around how much? So right now everything's going to be expensive, but even now with the way because the market is flooded, you can find a two-year-old, two or less-year-old truck for under eighty-five thousand dollars. Eighty-five thousand. And this trailer, so my truck is twenty eighteen when I bought it. So okay. It was under two years. My dry van uh, is a 2020, uh, 21, sorry. So this one I paid 65. Okay. But uh, you can get both truck and trailer for under $150,000 mm. in good condition. And insurance on that first year, of course, you're going to pay roughly around $1,500. Okay. But after I had my clean record and, and all that good stuff, my insurance went below $1,000. Oh, below $1,000 a month? Okay, so if we were to calculate, right? So let's just say as a first year, uh, you say like uh, insurance would be about like on average fifteen hundred, right? Thirteen to fifteen hundred. Thirteen to fifteen hundred. What, what your equipment type is. Okay. For dry vans, it's not that. Much. Yep. And then uh, having someone taking care of the paperwork and all that stuff, so that's probably like another three hundred fifty dollars a month, all right? So already you are bought like two grand, give or take. So a two year or less used truck. Yep. Under two thousand dollars. Under two thousand dollars a month. Okay. Let's keep it right around 2000 Okay. in today's market. Your trailer is roughly 1100 to $1,300. So let's get okay. $1,100 yep. for almost a brand new trailer. So $2,100, $3,100. Yep. $350, let us keep $400 mm -hmm. for your uh, compliance and your accounting purposes. Yep. So $3,500. Okay. And then bring in your uh, uh, insurance. That's another, uh, I will say, $1,500. Yep. So thirty-five and fifteen, five thousand dollars. Okay. So this five thousand dollars a month is gonna go whether you work or not. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, but if you work, if you work like we were talking about, where mm -hmm. you're working Monday to Friday, weekends home, you know, uh, that's half your week's pay. Okay. Just half of one week. Half of one week, you already make that you money. Make, after that is all yours. Okay. Oh, not well. That's not included with the. Um, you know, you gotta put money aside for repair. Also, put money aside yeah, yeah, for. Yeah, I'm saying to take care of expenses oh, that are gonna happen. Oh, for a monthly basis. Move, gotcha. You wheels roll or not? Yep. You better be prepared. Five thousand dollars every month. Is oh, okay. What you're gonna end up paying. All right. Yeah. Makes sense. But you will have your own truck. You will have your own company. You will have your own trailer. Yes. You're working for yourself. Okay. So, at the end of the day, we're all working for you. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. That's money, the point, you know. People say they work for money. 
No, it works no to be financially free. Is gonna match your freedom. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you're working for freedom, you're gonna time yourself and you're gonna. Yeah, uh, that was one of the main reasons why I've actually uh, became a trucker is because like I love traveling as well as um, the freedom of not having someone breathing down your neck. But it seems like as an owner operator, you even get more of that as far as freedom. You will definitely have a lot more of that. Yeah. I mean. Again, like I said, man, when you're making four times of what you would make as a company driver, mm. there is freedom. Okay. A lot of people get lost with that freedom. <laughs> I've seen it happen yeah. time and time again. But if you are the kind of person who's focused and who knows why he's doing this, or what exactly is the end goal, yeah, uh, you will end up on the plus side, on the positive side. So gotcha. I've known people that have within 18 months paid off their trucks and trailers really as owner -ups, with those kind of companies <laughs> okay so you can afford to do that yeah so uh, like um uh, as far as capital like how much money you would roughly need to get started like on your bank account let's say between let's say would you need because i know you're gonna take a loan and stuff like that right but personal money personal cash in, uh, in today's market yeah with the way the banks are structured and yeah with the way money is headed i will say take almost 90 percent loans yeah because the banks will give you so the number one thing you need is good credit okay when i say good credit 700 plus no 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 650 plus 650 right plus now. okay because the rate of interest is high so they're financing pretty much anybody over 650 has a good paying history you know uh the key is what you are looking to get in terms of what kind of a truck do i want okay like i said if you if you stick to my criteria and no more than two years old has warranties yep. and all that um, to start my own authority and all that because i did everything in washington mm. i would have roughly spent right around 30 grand Ooh. new truck new trailer i mean used truck used trailer yep less than two years setting up my own company setting mm. up my own authority getting all the licenses permits plates and all that yep. stuff so 20 to 30 grand is what you need. You need to save have to have saved up. A good, quick turnaround. Gotcha. Like today, I'm on a company truck. Tomorrow or a week from now, I want to be on my own truck. Yep. You need 25 to 30. 25 to 30. And if anybody tells you, again, people have different opinions. Yep. I'm giving you mine, which is more realistic. Okay. Uh, if you have any more than that, by all means, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, especially for somebody like you who's done it already for this long. It's not a bad idea to even go get a brand new truck. Yeah. Now, depending on, don't go buying a. Oh no, I'm, I'm not going crazy. A, you know, long nose. No, nope, I want me a workhorse. Company. Yeah. This is like the Toyota Camry of trucking. You know? Yeah. Uh, low on maintenance. Uh, easy to fix, and then good mileage, and you can get it at a decent price. Yeah. So, okay. But to answer your question, yeah, uh, just to be on the comfortable side because. You're gonna fuel up. Fuel is gonna be your biggest enemy. Yeah. In this business, you know? uh, so, like, when you fueling, do you pay a lot of attention about like you know fuel prices, uh, you know, from state to state, or just okay? When I was doing over the road, I never filled up in California, even though I picked up, loaded, and yeah. unloaded. Yeah. But I always used to make sure Lake Havasu or uh, right before entering California, fill up. Okay. And uh, now that I run on this lane. Mm -hmm. I always find like in the last six months or so, I don't think I've paid more than 350 gallons. So okay. With some of my friends running west and east, yep. they're like, bring us a tank load of fuel. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're paying close to six dollars, five and a half. Nice. So you will have to pay attention. So I mean, but there's apps for everything. Okay. So before you leave for your trip, yep. Look on the app because rates change at 11 every night mm -hmm. on most gas stations. Okay. So if you're planning to get somewhere and you know you'll be there before 11 at night, look for uh, fuel prices along that route. Uh, if you're running from Texas to, let's say, uh, Kansas or Oklahoma is usually going to be your best friend. Okay. Because there you'll find fuel prices like 350, wow. 70. See, these are like the little key knowledge as like, I mean, you know, is, I think people... This are... is all that's going to impact you yeah? at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the truck's not going to bother you that much if you take care of it. True. It's what you know. Yeah. That's going to help you capitalize on... Uh, the small stuff. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's all about 
money because yeah. that money is what's taking you to free, right? <laughs> yeah exactly so you're gonna try i'm not saying be a, a penny pincher kind of deal but you should know yeah if i fuel up here right now it's gonna cost me four dollars and ten cents but if i fuel up in oklahoma it's 60 cents cheaper when i fuel up 200 gallons 60 cents times it adds up 200 gallons is a decent amount of money so yeah when you do that day after day because you're gonna fuel up every day true all that adds up like my last 30 days i saved 12 1400 dollars that's my trailer payment man Oof. so and trailer payment plus my accountant and my compliance guy so okay that's how you gotta think as an owner off right because mm. okay this saving could take care of that oh the, that this way. part and that part and that part gotcha and then if you have other plans like you want to get into real estate and things of that nature if you have five or ten grand saved up right now when you go and look at real estate market and properties and of that nature you can mm. go buy a hundred thousand dollar property by putting ten thousand ten thousand dollars down yeah and that's going to generate you a thousand dollars in rent every month Exactly. You do this for seven years, you can have seven properties. Yeah. One more, if not more. Mm -hmm. So everything is interconnected. Yeah. I gotta admit, man, you actually give me a lot of confidence about this because, um, like, I ask a lot of questions about it, right? But sometimes you have to take a dive and you have to find out, you know, when you're comfortable enough and to have enough proper information to take a, a, a calculated risk, basically. Man. All right. I think that's that's about it <laughs> thank you for uh thank you for actually letting me interrogate you <laughs> anytime, brother, anytime. Yeah. I mean, people just i don't know why people have just stopped talking like old school truckers they would talk to each other all the time yeah and they would share experiences all right so i hope i hope you actually enjoyed this conversation uh that me and shaman was having and um for more information about this particular topic stay tuned continue to browse my channel because uh, that's one of the things that I will try to do and talk to people with a lot of a lot more experience than me and um, I'll be able to ask them questions therefore to increase our knowledge pool when it comes to this industry as far as traveling as well so hope you guys enjoy this share like subscribe to this channel and comment down below let me know what type of question would you like to know and uh, if I have the answer for you I might not have but I might know people who actually does. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Take care.